This is a tutorial for week one assignment four for color theory. I'm going to show you one fun, easy, quick method to create your monochromatic compositions for this assignment. So for this assignment, what you need to do is you need to create a simple uh, design and copy it twice and then use the same color for each design but in one version of the design you're going to use high key values with a variety of saturations of that one color and then the other you're going to use low key values with a variety of saturations for your one color so the way in which I would recommend uh, doing this assignment would be to actually use your monochromatic progressions that you created in week one assignment three I have here the monochromatic progressions that I created in the um, tutorial for week one assignment three uh, the top is my tints the second is my shades and then this is my tones progressing to a lighter value tones progressing to a darker value and then tones progressing to a constant value to maintaining maintaining a constant value um, all I've done is delete the text and then just kind of bunch them up a little bit so that they're all still here together um, and then basically all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this same illustrator file for that assignment and I'm going to collect these all up. I'm going to use the direct selection tool, black arrow tool, click and drag a box around them to select all of them and then I'm just going to shrink them down. So I'm holding down the shift or the command key to shrink them down smaller just to kind of move them to the side so that I have some room to work on my designs. Um, uh, to create my designs I'm going to um, use some shapes, some simple shapes and if you're relatively new to Illustrator I would recommend just sticking with one simple shape to create a really simple design and just kind of repeat that shape and uh, make a simple design out of it. It's one of the best ways to create a design and have the design have unity and um, good composition. So I'm just grabbing the rectangle tool and making some shapes that fit um, together. Um, now one thing I'm doing is I'm, I set the defaults to a white fill and a black stroke so that I have uh, outlines around my shapes. That way I can see the boxes and I can see how they're fitting together. So I'm just creating a simple design here using some shapes, clicking and dragging, thinking about the compositional balance. Um, you can get creative with these shapes if you want to. There are lots of fun things you can do in Illustrator with shapes to change them um, such as you for example you can play around with um, using multiple shapes you can also play around with things such as the warp tools uh, which are where are they I'm trying to find those warp tools I can't remember where they are Oh, there they are. Right under here. Okay, it looks like they changed the icon here. But yeah, so the warp tool, twirl tool, pucker tool, bloat tool. These are fun things to experiment with to make your design kind of fun and interesting. But for now, I'm just going to stick with basic shapes for this example. Um, okay, so let's say this is my design. I'm happy with the composition. It's well balanced. It's interesting. It's creative. Um, and now what I'm going to do is after I've created my design I'm going to click and drag around it again using that black arrow tool to uh, select the whole design then I'm going to hold down alt or option on the Mac and click and drag to create a copy of my design so now I have two versions of the same de basic design and all I have to do now is apply these colors to it um, these variations in hue value and set or in value and saturation of my one single hue. Um, okay, so I kind of got scooched over here. I'm going to press spacebar to drag this back over. Um, and now, okay, so I've got my charts here. Right now they're set up as blends, which means I can't really access the colors that are in between. So what I need to do is I need to expand them. So I'm going to select again all of these charts go to object expand and I want to make sure that I'm expanding especially the fill because I want to be able to access that information so now what I can do is easily just click on one of these boxes um, with the white arrow tool here the direct selection tool not the black arrow tool make sure you're using the white arrow tool 
um, and then I can select any of these colors to apply to my design. So remember one of them needs to be in high key so we can use the uh, light values and the colors that are kind of um, lighter and uh, make sure you use variations in value and saturation to create your design. So I'm just kind of selecting some of the lighter colors here to make a design using the high key colors. And it's nice to have this wide variety of colors to select from because it ensures that I'm getting variation and making things um, kind of interesting to look at. So I mean maybe I'm happy with this, maybe I'm not, maybe I want to play around with it some more, but you can feel free to experiment like this for pretty easily, um, just easily changing up the colors like this. So once you have one design, then you just move over to the next one, and remember that for the second design you need to create a design using low key colors, which are going to be colors that are darker in value. So again, make sure you're using variations in value and saturation. Um, and of your colors and you can use some of the uh, same colors overlapping um, and you want to make sure that you have contrast so in general you just need to create a composition that is um, high key versus low key but that doesn't mean that you can't use light and dark colors in each it just needs to meet it just means that the majority of the colors um, in your high key needs to be need to be light and the majority of colors in your uh, low key need to be dark but obviously you want a a good design has a, some degree of contrast so you're going to end up using uh, a bunch of different colors to kind of make the design uh, pop basically so when you're done with that now you have your two designs if you're if you're happy with where they are and how they are I'd probably work on these some more if I had, if this wasn't, you know, just a quick tutorial. Um, then you need to be able to save them so that you can share them. Um, easiest way to do that in Illustrator would actually just be to put them side by side like this, and then you come over to the Artboard tool. Now the Artboard tool is going to tell you what area will be exported when you save this for uh, for web as a JPEG. And if I zoom out, the artboard, see how the artboard tool tells me where the edges of my format are? So again, I'm going to click on that artboard tool, and I'm just going to pull in these um, selector corners to tighten it up so that I'm telling the program that I only want this part to be saved and exported when I save um, as a JPEG. So then we go back to our black arrow tool when we're done. And then all you do to export is go to File, Save for Web and Devices. And what that's going to do is it's going to export just the part of um, just the area that you use to select um, using the artboard tool and there you have your two designs side by side um, both monochromatic compositions using variations in value and saturation one using mostly high key values light values and the other using mostly low key values or dark values so this is a fun um, kind of easy way to complete this assignment especially if you're relatively new to these software programs, this would be the method that I would recommend using.